guys welcome back to my channel today is Wednesday August the 8th and I just want to thank you for uh, all of your nice compliments that you paid to my landlord um, you know obviously he did do an excellent job on my ceiling and and y'all know that he washed my sheets and washed and ironed my curtains and all of those wonderful things so I really appreciate all of the kind words that you left for John to read, and uh, he does know about my channel. Um, but I wanted to tell you something else that he did for me. Um, of course, my rent was due, so uh, I always pay John in cash, and it's $590. And he does charge an extra $50 each summer uh, to cover the electricity for the running the air conditioner. So I had paid him $30. Um, in uh, July, you know, part of the electricity cost. So then uh, this month, I, you know, gave him the other $20. So he came over Monday afternoon and, um, you know, I gave him the, it was $610 uh, cash. So he counted it out and um, he wrote me my receipt for the rent, which is $590. And then he wrote me the receipt for the, um, the electricity for the AC, which was $20. And then he counted out $300 and gave it back to me. And he said, um, I was going to pay for you to stay in a motel. So uh, here's what it would have cost. <laughs> so God bless his heart. He's such an, an amazing man. So I'm very thankful that I read from him. <laughs> so thank you, John. So also... Uh, <laughs> Y'all, this is so strange how things work out. Um, so then Monday afternoon, I go to get in my car, and um, the ignition wouldn't turn on. And I just kept trying and, you know, jiggling it and jiggling it. And uh, I needed milk, so I wanted to go down to 7-Eleven and just pick up a little, you know, quart or half gallon of milk to last me until I could get to Walmart. So I finally got it, I jiggled it and jiggled it and finally got it to start and I made it to 7-Eleven and I left the engine running. I did not want to chance it not starting. So I just ran in there real quick and got my milk. And um, so then when I got home um, Monday evening, or no, it was yesterday, Tuesday, I called the Toyota place and I said, um, you know, this is what's wrong with my car, it won't start. And um, so they said, well, to bring it in and that they would do a diagnostic test on it, which would cost $130. So, um, you know, I made the appointment for Wednesday morning. But then I started thinking, what if it doesn't start when I go to get in at Wednesday morning and then I have to be there, you know, in, in 30 minutes or so. So I decided to go ahead and take it uh, yesterday afternoon. So I went out there to start it and it would not start. I jiggled it and jiggled it and played with it. I got my WD-40 and squirted it in the ignition hole and everything, and that didn't work. I just knew the WD-40 would, would take care of it. So I came back inside and called AAA, so they uh, brought a, you know, tow truck came and took me to, um, to the Toyota dealer, which is in Eatontown, New Jersey, and it was um, eight miles because I had to pay for $4 a mile over five miles. I just have the basic AAA, not the, the plus or the premium. So uh, I just left the car there and um, I told the service manager, you know, I really need, need you to fix it as quickly as you can because um, I have a grandbaby due on the 15th. And, um, you know, I'm kind of stressing out a little bit about it because I know with my second child, uh, Jeremy, he came um, two to three weeks early. So I just want, you know, I want to have my bag packed and I want to be prepared to, to go to Long Island any, at a moment's notice. So I get a call this morning from Toyota. <laughs> it's the um, ignition, ignition key switch. Um, and he says that the, the key has to have a new, he has to order a new key that will fit the new ignition switch and it has a computer chip in it or something. And I said, well, what's the cost? And he said, $530. <laughs> so if it's not one thing, it's another, y'all. But um, 
thank thank the good Lord that I do have that extra three hundred that I can uh, pay towards it, and um, and the the remaining balance. Um, I don't have a credit card or uh, I don't have a penny in savings, but uh, Jill does have a credit card that she will let me charge it, and then I will, you know, add that to my ongoing I O U <laughs> to my daughter. But it'll all work out. I just want my car back, and um, I want it running good. So I wanted to tell y'all that uh, the the lady that I drew the name for the lizard skin purse, uh, Sand W, she has not contacted me. And uh, I have tried. Um, I went back through all my old videos where she had left comments, and um, you know I have not heard from her. You know, I, I did send her a comment, you know, through her last comment that she had won the, the lizard skin purse and to contact me. But I haven't heard from her. So we're going to draw. I left everybody's names in the bowl. And we're going to draw another name. So good luck. I'm not going to look. Okay. I got one. Oh, this is the Tuesday 11. <laughs> so, Tuesday, you need to uh, send me uh, your email address, um, and I will ship this purse out to you right away. And I know that um, you live in Zurich, Switzerland, but we'll figure out a way to get it there. <laughs> so, just send me an email, and I want to, um, to be able to get your your uh, home address from you. Congratulations, Tuesday. And y'all, that is her real name. <laughs> she did tell me that. But I have some more Dr. Searroyd stories to tell you. Um, now, y'all know that I had, that I was also the housekeeper in addition to being the nanny. Now, here in America, most nannies, they have to do all the housekeeping and, um, or in my you know, in my experience, that's what was required, the housekeeping and the grocery shopping and cooking and all the cleaning the house and everything. So one day I was in uh, Dr. Searroyd's bedroom and I was cleaning the bedroom and, you know, dusting his dresser and everything and there was an empty Ziploc bag there. So I picked it up and put it in the trash and, you know, went on about my day and everything and uh, he had been deer hunting. And uh, that was another problem for me because when he would go deer hunting, then he would just bring everything in, including the deer, you know, and hang it from the back porch for all the blood to, to drip out of it. But he would also bring in all of his uh, deer hunting clothes. I mean, these, you know, the orange vests and all the camouflage and everything and just dump it all in the hallway. Um, well, the laundry room was outside of the nanny quarters right outside of my bedroom. So I would have all these muddy camouflage clothes in the hallway. And uh, and then he instructed me not to wash them in regular soap. So I had to go buy some kind of special, you know, unscented uh, detergent to wash his, his deer hunting clothes in. But anyway, um, I guess it was the next day when he realized that the Ziploc bag was missing. So he came in there and said, he was in his roid rage, and he goes, Glenda, where's that Ziploc bag? And I said, well, I threw it in the garbage. He said, well, there was a tick in it that had bit him, and he wanted to take it and get it tested for Lyme disease. <laughs> so I got into trouble for throwing away Dr. Searroy's uh, tick. <laughs> oh, Lord. And then um, he had taken flying lessons. He wanted, you know, he, he's a narcissist, so he wanted to know how to do everything and, uh, and then brag about it to everybody. So he would go on, you know, Sunday and, and take these flying lessons and everything. And there's a little, um, little local airport where he would go. And so he learned how to fly, a, I guess it was a single engine plane. Well, then he wanted to learn how to fly a seaplane and land it <laughs> in the water. So, I don't know why he couldn't learn how to fly a seaplane here in New Jersey, but um, the school that 
he found to teach him how to fly the seaplane was in uh, Daytona Beach, Florida. So he decided that, you know, we were going to fly down there to Florida in this plane uh, that his instructor owned. The instructor was going to fly, and it was going to be Dr. Searroyd and uh, the two children and the children's mother, who we are calling Twinkie. So I told Dr. Searroyd, I am not flying on that single engine plane. There's no way. <laughs> so he bought me a ticket to fly commercial. And um, so I get down there and flew into the airport and I rented a car and of course he had rented us a nice um, hotel room and everything. Well then the children's, um, Twinkie's brother's little boy, he was about seven or eight years old. Well, he wanted to go too, so um, they didn't live too far from there, so they had brought him over there. Well, uh, this little boy, he was a terror, you know, a little terrorist or something. I could not control him. He would not mind me at all. Well, he and the little boy that I was, you know, Dr. Searroyd's son, when we went to eat breakfast, they were underneath the table playing. They had taken the Splenda packs and broken them all open and emptied Splenda out all underneath the table in the restaurant. Of course, the waitress, you know, she was looking at me like it was my fault. Dr. Searroyd wasn't there. It was just me and Twinkie and, and the three kids. And I said, I'm just the nanny. I, you know, I'm doing my best. I can't help it. I'm sorry. So I did get underneath the table with a napkin and, and I'll try to clean it up and everything. But uh, this is getting too long, so uh, I'm going to end it, and then we'll pick up with uh, probably the last story about Dr. Searroyd. I think I'm getting to the end of this job. So y'all just give me a thumbs up and share my video with your on your social media, and just keep on coming back. Bye, guys.